Our topic for today is about chamber enlargement on electrocardiogram. We use the term enlargement if we mean atrium and hypertrophy if we pertain to ventricle. So right or left atrial enlargement and right or left ventricular hypertrophy. Take note that several doctors may use the term atrial abnormality instead of atrial enlargement because the ECG criteria for atrial enlargement have less specificity. So what are the indications of possible chamber enlargement or hypertrophy in service ECG? If you investigate for atrial enlargement, you look at the P waves since P waves represent atrial depolarization. On the other hand, ventricular depolarization is reflected as QRS complex on service ECG. So if there is ventricular hypertrophy, you scrutinize the QRS complex. The question is, what P wave changes suggest right or left atrial enlargement? And what QRS complex changes suggest right or left ventricular hypertrophy? Let us discuss atrial enlargement first. When investigating for atrial enlargement, the best leads to look at are the P waves of lead 2 and lead V1. In right atrial enlargement, there is P wave amplitude of at least 2.5 mm or 2.5 small boxes in lead 2, or P wave amplitude of at least 1.5 mm or 1.5 small boxes in lead V1. That is the criteria for right atrial enlargement. In left atrial enlargement, there is P wave duration of at least 0.12 seconds or 3 small boxes in lead 2, or P wave terminal negative deflection of at least 1 mm or 1 small box deep and at least 0 0.04 seconds or 1 small box in duration. Additional surface ECG P wave morphology of left atrial enlargement is bifid P wave in lead 2. It has two peaks with a distance between two peaks of at least 0 0.04 seconds or 1 small box. So those are the criteria for left atrial enlargement. My mnemonics here so you won't be exchanging which criteria is which. Right for height, left for length. So let us apply what you just learned. For example, in this ECG tracing, what is your reading? If your answer is right atrial enlargement or abnormality, then you are right. The amplitude of P wave in lead 2 is more than 2.5 millimeters and in lead V1 is more than 1.5 millimeters. How about this tracing? What is your reading? If your answer is left atrial enlargement or abnormality, then you are correct. The duration of P wave in lead 2 is 0.12 seconds, and the terminal negative deflection of P wave in lead V1 is at least 1 millimeter deep and more than 0 0.04 seconds in duration. How about this tracing? What is your reading? If your answer is sinus rhythm, then you are correct. There is no atrial enlargement in this tracing. How about this tracing? What is your reading? This is by atrial enlargement because it fulfills both the criteria for right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement. Our next topic is ventricular hypertrophy. Again, when we look for ventricular hypertrophy on surface ECG, we check the QRS complexes. For left ventricular hypertrophy, we have several sets of criteria. First is the Sokolo-Leon criteria, which is the sum of the amplitude of S wave, which is the negative deflection in V1 in millimeters, plus the amplitude of R wave, which is the positive deflection in V5 or V6 in millimeters, whichever is taller, is more than 35 millimeters. This criteria is similar for both male and female patients. For example, in this case, the S or negative deflection in V1 is 16 millimeters, while the R or positive deflection in V6 is 32 millimeters, with a total of 48 millimeters. So this is left ventricular hypertrophy by Sokolo-Leon criteria. The next criteria is the Cornell criteria, which is the sum of the amplitude of S wave, which is the negative deflection in V3 in millimeters, plus the amplitude of R wave, which is the positive deflection in AVL in millimeters, is more than 28 millimeters in male or more than 20 millimeters in female. 
For example, in this case, the patient is a male. The S in V3 is 20 millimeters, and the R in AVL is 20 millimeters with a total of 40 millimeters. So, this is left ventricular hypertrophy by Cornell criteria. There are also voltage ECG changes indicative of left ventricular hypertrophy such as in the limb leads, R wave in 1 plus S wave in 3 is more than 25 mm or R wave in AVL is more than 11 mm or R wave in AVF is more than 20 mm or S wave in AVR is more than 14 mm or in the chest leads, R wave in V4 or V5 or V6 is more than 26 mm. Tallest R wave plus deepest S wave both in the precordial leads is more than 45 mm. Voltage criteria must be accompanied by non-voltage criteria to be considered diagnostic of left ventricular hypertrophy. The non-voltage ECG changes indicative of left ventricular hypertrophy are increased R wave peak time duration more than 50 milliseconds in V5 or V6, and ST segment depression and T-wave inversion in left-sided leads V4, V5, V6, 1, or AVL, signifying left ventricular strain pattern or left ventricular repolarization abnormality. This strain pattern is quite challenging to differentiate from ECG changes of ischemia, so we may just report LVH with strain pattern and or lateral wall ischemia. Another non-voltage ECG changes of LVH is ST segment elevation in right-sided leads V1, V2, V3, and AVR. This is a sample ECG tracing showing some of the voltage and non-voltage criteria of LVH. In the limb leads, R in 1 and S in 3 is more than 25 mm. R in AVL is more than 11 mm. S in AVR is more than 14 mm. In precordial lead, tallest R plus deepest S in the precordial lead is more than 45 mm. Increase R wave peak time in V6, and LV strain pattern in V4, V5, V6, 1, and AVL, and ST elevation in V1, V2, and AVR. How about right ventricular hypertrophy? You suspect right ventricular hypertrophy if there is right axis deviation. That's the first clue that would tell you that you might be dealing with right ventricular hypertrophy. Next step is to check the QRS complex changes. There is dominant R wave or positive deflection in V1, which is more than 7 mm tall or an RS ratio of more than 1. Or there is dominant S wave or negative deflection in V5 or V6, which is more than 7 mm deep or an RS ratio of less than 1. Take note that the QRS duration should be less than 0.12 seconds so that the changes is not due to right bundle branch block. There are also non-voltage ECG changes indicative of right ventricular hypertrophy such as ST depression and T-wave inversion in right-sided leads V1, V2, or V3. In summary, these are some of the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. These are the criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy. These are the criteria for atrial abnormality. Let us apply everything that we just learned. For example, in this tracing, what is your reading? It is right atrial abnormality or enlargement and right ventricular hypertrophy. How about this tracing? What is your reading? This is left ventricular hypertrophy by Sokololean criteria and Cornell criteria with repolarization abnormality. How about this tracing? What is your reading? There is sign of right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement, so by atrial abnormality. Moreover, this tracing fulfills the criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy and voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. So this is also by ventricular hypertrophy. 
And that is the end of our lecture.